hi it's Jerry and it's that time it's spring and Joan and I are getting ready to take a couple months spring and summer trip and we're really looking forward to that uh, we do this every year this year we're going to go down to Florida we're going to be beach bums if you look at some of our past ones um, videos that we've done especially last year we'll go down for about two months and just become beast bums and it's so much fun and I've got a ton of great videos I'm going to be sharing while we're down there we're going to do some new things and I can't wait for you to see that but um, we had a hard winter trip. It was cold. Uh, we were stuck in snow a bunch. Uh, we had, I don't know, 20, 30 days of uh, sub-freezing weather. And uh, that takes a toll on the camper. It does a lot of things to it and makes it, I don't know, sometimes you can have pipe problems even though this is a four season. What's four seasons in a camper? Spring, summer, fall, and not winter. Don't forget that. <laughs> But anyway, uh, we took it out in the winter and uh, it was cold. So there's some things that we're going to do before we take off to make sure that everything's going to be fine. And then just some general maintenance. So I'm going to take you on a number of things just to show you what we do. Most of these are we do once a year. Uh, some of these I'll share with you we do every time, maybe, maybe once or twice a month, depending on what's going to be going on, how many times we move. Uh, sometimes we move week to week to week, sometimes every two weeks, sometimes once a month. It just depends on really what we're in the mood for. So I'll take you around. The first thing that we've done with the camper uh, yesterday is uh, we gave it a good scrub. I got all that road grease and grime. There was probably salt on it left over from all the snow uh, back in February and early March uh, when we faced all that stuff up in Kentucky and Virginia, all up in that area. So, uh, and, and look, there's no secret to this. Everybody has their secret sauce for being able to wash their camper. Mine's simple. Five gallon bucket Home, De uh, five gallon home Depot bucket, one of those big orange buckets, um, I put about a quarter of a cup of just plain old Dawn liquid uh, and then fill it about half full of water and then get one of those soft bristle extension car brushes and just, you know, hose it down, give it a good wash, cuts all that grease, grime, bugs, does a good job. And uh, so we've done that. Um, now we're going to do, we also did the roof. A matter of fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll put up here uh, in the notes um, of what we do to give the roof a great scrub. Uh, I did that video last year. You should always scrub your roof, whether you've got a, a rubber roof or we have a what they call a PVC roof. Give that roof a really, really good scrub. Same thing. Quarter cup of Dawn, and a couple gallons of water in a bucket, soft bristle brush, give it a good scrub. Get all that pollen, pine sap, all that crud off. Make that thing nice and clean and shiny. It'll do two things. One, it'll extend the life of your roof. Second, it will um, uh, act as a reflective agent, especially in the summer and the spring when this hot, we're going to be down in Florida, that hot Florida sun is going to be hitting the roof and it'll help reflect, help keep our air conditioning costs down, our electrical costs down. So that's really, really big for us. So let's go up on the roof, my least favorite, uh, and let me show you what you should do every year as far as an inspection. You should always do this every year. Never forget. It's very, very important. Let's go up top and I'll show you what we're going to do. So I've walked around to the back of the camper. We have a ladder on ours, and I'm going to climb this. I'm going to turn the, uh, the, the camera off while I do this. This is probably my least favorite things to do on a camper, but let's go up top and I'll show you what you should do from an inspection standpoint. So I'm up on the roof. Uh, we'll walk carefully. Now let me suggest, if you're going to do this, don't do it early in the morning, or heaven forbid, don't do it after a rainstorm. Um, these things are just like uh, just like grease and uh, you'll hurt yourself really bad. Be careful, take short steps. Here's the things that we're going to look at. You'll see these areas have a dicor, that lap sealant, and you're going to want to inspect it. You're going to look very, very close, check your corners, anything with a flat surface, make sure there's no pinholes. Do this around all your vents. Uh, pull your covers off your air conditioner. Uh, look around, and this, this sun's going to be very, very bright. Look around the uh, antenna, whatever antenna brand you have. Make sure around your boot is very tight and that there's no pinholes. Check all your vents. Uh, we have a sunroof. Not only should you look around your sunroof and make sure that all the lap sealant is good, but there's screw holes in here and make sure you don't have any fine cracks. Uh, we had that happen one year and um, it was in between inspections actually, and it was a mess. Let's walk back here to the back 
and I actually had to do a little bit of maintenance yesterday I'm not going to show that on the video but you might be able to see some color variations in this one I had little little pinhole spots that were down here and uh, I filled those and then around the edge here um, I had some separation it's just that type of thing that occurs when you travel up and down the road and there's vibration this stuff will sometimes break loose a little bit and just take that few you know it took me five minutes and then uh, a little bit of a lap sealant just to fill in the pinholes and make sure you don't have any leaks um, it'll it'll uh, extend the life of your camper and uh, you'll definitely enjoy your trip a little bit as long as you, if you don't have water running down in the camper let's go back down and I'll show you some other things we do Another item that I do is I check the tire pressure and the condition of the tires. I'm gonna always look, make sure you don't have a, like a crown in your tire. Um, I'm religious about my tires. All you have to have is one blowout in your camper um, and you'll understand why. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna put a, first of all, let me show you a picture. Here's a, a couple pictures of a blowout that we had as we were tri traveling um, about a year or so ago and it was absolutely catastrophic um, and i have a blog on that about that 3500 mile trip i'll put that link uh, right up here so you can see that but here's a couple things that you should do i'm religious about this and what i had missed on that trip was um, the tires that came with this camper uh, i won't go into the brand but they uh, a lot of people refer to them as china bombs and um, i had separation and i did i looked at the tire pressure before we left on the trip but I didn't look at the tire to make sure it was flat and that I didn't have a crown uh, going in the top of it where the tread had actually separated. If your tires get too hot when you travel, a lot of people don't realize this, most of your camper tires are 65 mile an hour tires and they'll drive 75, 80 miles an hour down the road for 100 miles. These tires will heat up, those belts will separate and then you'll have an explosion. And when that thing goes off, um, as a matter of fact, I was talking to a friend of mine who just had that happen and he literally beat the floor of his slide out out. It was quite catastrophic. I was fortunate it didn't have that happen, but I did have a lot of damage. It ripped all this out. All this had to be replaced. It was just terrible. So look at your tires, look around the beads, make sure you don't have any dry rot. If your tires are five years older or older, uh, five years old or older, uh, you'll see you'll start seeing some cracks get rid of those tires they're dangerous um, make sure that that's not going on make sure those beads um, are nice and, and and crack free check the tops of your tires and make sure you don't have any damage and then check your tire pressure i just use you know i use a trucker's friend here um, these tires have been changed out as a matter of fact i'll share this with you as well i'm putting a lot of links in today but uh, i have a uh, a video where i replaced my 16 inch wheels with 17 and a half inch wheels um, this is a, a good year it's a it's a very popular tire um, they're uh, g 1117s um, or excuse me g 114 g 114s apologize for that and uh, this is what they call a fleet tire this is a 75 mile an hour tire and i went from 3600 pound capacity to uh, 4,800 pound capacity. So um, much stronger tire, a lot more margin out on the highway, uh, and it takes a lot more air as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and check my pressure. And my pressure is good. And I'm gonna do this on all four wheels, two on this side, and then I'm gonna do uh, the two on the other side. And if I have to put some more air in here, I will. And, um, but, but make that inspection before you do anything else. Now, along with the camper tire, I'm also going to check, this is a ton truck dually, and I've got uh, six wheels all the way around, and I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to look inside the door, which I already know, but look inside your door on the driver's side. These take 65 pounds, and I'm going to check them, and I am at 65 pounds on the front and mine call for 65 pounds on the back so i'm going to check the front tires i'm going to check the back tires and if they have to have any air i'm going to inspect them i'm going to do the same thing that i did on my camper i'm going to make sure these are nice and flat on top i'm going to look around the beads make sure i don't have any problems here at the bead make sure they're not dry rotted these are brand new tires anyway they're a year old i don't expect any there 
and uh, you know just make sure these tires are in good shape and ready for you know a couple thousand miles on the road uh, which we are probably going to be doing here shortly and uh, so I've checked my tires and we're going to go on to our next task now once I finish checking all the air pressure in the tire the next thing that I'm going to use is this 303 um, aerospace protectant. I'll put a link down in the description notes of the video of where you can purchase this. I cannot stress enough how important it is to put this on your tires. Um, this will really help prevent dry rot. I also have a cover if I'm going to be in the hot sun for say a month at a time. I'll put covers on the wheels but even with that I still put this 303 here and I'm going to show you another location that we put it as well. It helps prevent dry rot and will extend the length of your tires. It looks kind of milky. This is not, um, this is not one of those things that, uh, that make a tire shine. It will shine a little bit when you first start, but it's, it's not the main reason why you're doing this. This is not a tire shine. I use a, a lint free cloth and then I'm just going to wipe the excess off and I'm going to do this on all four tires I'm going to got, I've got some on the rim it's not going to hurt it but I'm going to just kind of wipe that off so it won't be spotty and I'm going to wipe all the tires down and let them dry and I'm going to do this on all four and this is really going to help you extend the life of your tires Something else you should consider with this 303 is these gaskets that you find inside, especially if you have slide outs. Um, the, the sun will beat on those, uh, they'll dry out over time, they'll crack, they'll, um, you'll, you'll go to pull your slide out one day and they'll just literally peel off. And you definitely don't want that to happen. And this 303 will do two things. One, it'll give them lubrication without making them oily. And second, it will give them that protection uh, against the hot sun. So it's real simple. Just um, spray a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. Give it a nice wipe down. Do this inside and out. And uh, you'll actually see kind of life come back into them. I'll get me a step ladder. And I'll do this on all my slide outs. I've got uh, three slide outs on this and I'll go ahead and lubricate all those gaskets and uh, make sure that, um, again, we're, gonna, we're here to increase longevity and keep our maintenance down. And five minutes of this can save you hundreds of dollars and a, and a lot of trouble later on down the line. So this is a good tip that you should consider. We haven't used our awning all winter, so I'm going to check our awning, make sure that it's going to come out, make sure that mechanism's not giving us any problem. Really important to do because, you know, again, you want to keep that hot summer sun off of you, and we want to make sure that's going to be working as well. So I'm going to go ahead and check my awning. All right. Awning and mechanism's working great. I'm also going to look at it and see if it's real mildewy, see if it needs cleaning. And it's, it is a tad, but I don't think it's enough to fool with. Uh, I'll probably at least wait till the end of the season to do that. I pulled my slides out. There's two things that I'm going to do for the maintenance of my slides for this year. The first thing that I'm going to use is a dry lube. I'll put uh, down in the show notes where you can buy a slide out dry lube. Never, never use WD-40, 3-in-1 oil. Uh, any oil-based product, uh, anything like that, you must use a dry lube on your slide outs. Now I have what they call a track system uh, and I'll get underneath here and I'll show you that in just a second what that looks like. You have cable systems, you've got very other, various other types of things on your cable system. Spray some of your dry lube on a rag, wipe the cable, uh, let it dry, then you can slide it back in and out. I'm going to treat my slides. I'm going to also treat my um, uh, rear stabilizer that has a screw in it. I'm going to spray that as well. So I'm going to do this on all my slide uh, mechanisms and uh, make sure that they're lubed up and that way um, you, it helps uh, with this with this dry lube it helps um, prevent things like dust 
and mud adhering to the slides and getting caught up in your gears and possibly causing damage. And you'll also notice too, a lot of times your slides will start squeaking or have that shrill when they go in and out. Um, this may not get rid of it 100%, but it will definitely help minimize uh, all that squeaking that you're hearing. So let's crawl up underneath the slide and I'll show you how I put this on. It's super simple. So here's that slide mechanism that I was talking about. You can see the gears that go in and out, and then you can see the gears that are back there. Uh, I'm just gonna take this, this material and just give it a good spray. I'm gonna be liberal with it. You don't want it sloshing and draining everywhere, but I'm gonna do that on both sides. So again, I'm gonna spray. I'm gonna get the gears. If you'll notice also, I have this plunger, the screw. This is the screw that actually pushes it in and out. And I'm gonna put a little bit of just a little bit of gunk right there. I'm gonna spray both sides of this and give it a nice spray. And I'm gonna do all my slides. And again, this is just great maintenance and will help uh, with the longevity of maintaining this uh, slide and gear mechanism. I'm also gonna inspect the bolts and just make sure that nothing's loose or backed out. And I'm gonna do that everywhere. Just make sure that everything is tight and hadn't shifted. And uh, this all looks good. The next thing I'm going to do is check on my water lines. Uh, again, uh, I shared with you that we were, you know, we had a rough winter. It was cold, 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 cold. Um, we had the pipes freeze up once or twice. It wasn't bad. Uh, it only lasted maybe for a couple hours. But, you know, again, they did freeze up. Uh, we didn't have any problems as we came, you know, as we came out of, out of Virginia this year. But uh, now the camper sat for, you know, a couple months through tax season and we've got, all, you know, we've got some business out of the way and it sat here. So sometimes um, if you have stressed out your pipe, some things can happen. So we want to test that. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to hook up my water line and um, we're uh, going to put some pressure on the lines and then I'm gonna, just gonna go and we'll t I'll take you inside. We're just gonna walk around and just make sure that, you know, under the sink's okay, um, toilet's flushing okay, not leaking, all those types of things. It'll only take us just a few minutes to get that done. Oh, one other thing I wanna share with you. Um, can you see these? They're, they're, they're these little brass fittings. I'll do a close up on them. See how simple they are? It's a just a little brass fitting. It's a quick connect. Uh, Jerry, you're lazy. No, I'm not. Uh, what was happening is I was screwing these off and on, off and on, off and on, and this thing got loose and broke off. And I think this quick connect fitting is going to be so much better. And uh, you just, you know, just snap it on. You just take this and just snaps on just like that. It's nothing to it. How about that? Uh, and it doesn't leak either. <laughs> that's another thing that's important. With the water turned on, I'll do a couple things. I'll just make sure that I don't have any surface leaks here, you know, from where the water is hooked up, um, that the hose isn't leaking, that, you know, the hose I'm going to be using this season uh, doesn't have any problems, so I don't see any water coming from that. Uh, I'm going to take a look up underneath the bottom, see if I've got any water build up there, fill around the edge here of this uh, water bulkhead and uh, I have no drips or no leaks. So uh, let's go inside, we're gonna check the sinks and we'll do a few things up there as well. Now that I've got the water hooked up outside, uh, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm just gonna make sure that uh, the water's running well in my sink. I'm gonna do this in the bathroom as well. And when you do that off and on, what it does is it, 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 it gets the air out of the line. Here you hear it spitting. Gets the air out of the line. And then it also puts a little bit of um, a little bit of pressure uh, on the fittings that are up underneath the sink. So next, I'm going to crawl under the sink uh, and turn a flashlight on and just make sure that I didn't have any water dripping and that none of the fittings were loose. You know, just from the vibration of the travel, just make sure that's okay. So let's look up underneath here and make sure that everything's okay. So after snapping the water lines a couple times, I'm going to look at the fittings here of these water lines and make sure there's no dripping going on. The easiest thing to do is just look down on the floor. And uh, if you see any, you know, water spots or anything there, you've got some, it's, that's the quickest test. You've just got some water leaks. And again, once a year, you should be fine just making sure that everything's okay. So one more tip before we leave the kitchen here. This, go, this water goes, and our camper goes into a gray tank. Uh, if you've ever drained the water in that tank, it's gray uh, for a number of reasons. It's uh, grease from pots and pans, it's a washing liquid, 
and uh, the the downside is sometimes small um, food particles like where you've uh, had vegetables you've chopped them up very teeny food particles uh, sometimes can get past the screen that's in the sink. Here's what we do before we go on our trip. <clears throat> this is just plain old Dawn. You can get the generic stuff if you want to. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put about, I don't know, maybe around a quarter of a cup. I don't measure it. You know, I just kind of say, mm, that's, about <laughs> that's about a quarter of a cup. And then I'm going to turn on my water. I'm going to rinse it all out of the sink if any got out there. But the big issue what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to be putting about a gallon, maybe two gallons of water, no more than that, in this gray tank. Now why would I want to do something like that? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. What this is going to do, it's just almost going to be like the agitation in a washing machine. Um, this Dawn is a degreaser. So what's in this gray tank from this sink? Grease, food particles, and this thing's been sitting for about six weeks, okay? So I dumped the tanks. This probably got kind of cakey in there if it all didn't get out. Now what's going to happen here is I go to my next destination. That Dawn's going to be in there with about two gallons of water and it's just going to be moving all over, stopping back and forth, back and forth, agitating, sloshing up on the sides, scrubbing that bottom out. So when I get to my next destination, I'll go ahead, run a little bit more water in and dump it, and you're just not going to believe what comes out of your gray tank. So again, about two gallons of water should be sufficient. So I'm going to add about that two gallons of water in here. I'm going to do it up in the bathroom. I'm going to do it at the tub. And I'm also going to do it at the toilet, but hold that thought because there's one thing different with the toilet than I do with the rest of the sinks when I use the Dawn. Hold that, okay? I'm here at the bathroom. I'm going to turn the water on. Again, make sure I don't have any leaks. Everything looks great. I'm going to take my Dawn. Again, about a quarter of a cup. Down in the tank, I'm going to run about a gallon of water. Make sure you get that soap out <laughs> because it'll be like a skating rink if you don't. It'll be super slippery. All right, so I've got that water in there. Now let's look and let me show you what I'm going to do with the toilet. Almost the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing with the toilet. I'm going to go ahead and just push it down. And just like what we do um, with the sink and so forth, about two gallons of water should be sufficient. I'm not going to measure it. I'm just going to guess it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And again, I'm not going to go into the molecular structure of human waste, but again, if Dawn will cut grease in a sink and all those food particles, it's going to do something very, very similar here with the, uh, with the black tank as well. It's going to slosh around on both sides, front and back, and uh, it's just going to give it a good agitation and scrub. Now, here is going to be the difference with the toilet compared to what I'm going to do with my, black, my gray tanks. I've shared this a lot about the bathroom and how to be able to maintain a good, healthy black tank. I know that term may seem a little bizarre. What is a healthy black tank? Well, um, a healthy black tank is one that uh, breaks down all those solids that you put in, human waste, toilet paper, and so forth. We use a marine grade toilet paper. We use Scott's. It's a double ply. If you go to our website, ilovervlife.com, you'll see that in the on the uh, RV products, the essentials. Uh, if, if you can't find it at the Walmarts or somewhere else, I buy a case of it at a time off the uh, off of Amazon. It's, it's the best way for us to be able to buy it. It's pretty cheap. I don't know, under $2 a, a big roll pack. 
Now what I'm going to do different here than I'm going to do with the gray tanks, I'm not going to empty the gray tanks immediately when we get down to Florida here next week. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and flush out um, my black tank. I will, I've got a, a, a flush out mechanism that's built into the tank. I'll hook the hose up to that and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wash all this Dawn out of there. Why? Because uh, we're going to be using Happy Camper. Uh, I've talked about this in other videos. Uh, I cannot stress enough. We've tried everything. We've tried the orange product, the blue product, the green product. Um, they're okay. If that's what you like, look, use them. Don't, don't change something that's already working for you. But this is why we use Happy Camper. Those colored products, those orange and greens and blues and so forth, have this perfumey smell that Joan and I just don't like. Pew! I just don't like it. As a matter of fact, when you get in a super hot climate, we're going to be down in Florida, it's going to get hot, 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 hot. It almost mixes with that waste smell so you get perfumed waste. Uh, you know, I'm probably going into one of these TMI moments here, but um, ugh, I just don't like it. And I don't know that it does that great of a job to break down the solids. That's where Happy Camper works. And I know this sounds like a commercial and I'm really trying to help. Um, and not, you know, not, not this be just purely a commercial. One scoop every morning in a hot client. If it's cold, I use a scoop every other day, but in a hot climate, it's an enzyme. It will break the solids down, mix with the water. When you go to drain your tank, if you've got one of those clear elbows, it looks like, you know, just a clear, well, not a clear liquid, a chocolate liquid. Everything is broke down except for what you put in it that morning, the toilet paper and so forth that morning. But even that will be broke up into tons of pieces if you use a marine grain to toilet paper. And it just keeps the smell down because the enzyme is working and breaking all that down and keeping it from, I don't know, lack of a better term, this isn't a biological term, keep it from festering. But it just breaks it down, churns it, you know, I can just see it's just bubbling in there probably if you were able to look at it. And it just cleans that tank out and it's super Super, super, super clean. So again, if you like the orange, the greens, the blues, whatever the color of the day is, the purples, keep using them. I've even talked to some people that use nothing at all and have good success. I've never had a poo dam. I've never had a clog. I've never had a problem. And I, I just love this stuff. We buy a big tub of it. This will last us a year plus traveling seven to eight months. And um, I just think it's fantastic. So I will go ahead and dump all this Dawn out because that Dawn will prevent this enzyme from working. You cannot put another cleaner, a Clorox, please never put Clorox in your toilet. It'll break the seals down and cause it to leak. But I'll not put anything like um, the purple liquids or Lysol or any pine oil or any of that type of stuff. Just put this in there and um, it'll keep a good super clean tank. And I think you'll like that a lot. Again, if, if you don't have a place to buy this or you haven't buy it, bought it, I buy it off of Amazon. I'll give you some links and it'll help you. And I hope it does help you. Um, Joan and I like it a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead, I won't put this on the video. I'm gonna go ahead and test the water on the uh, sink here. And then I'll show you a few more tips that we do. And then we'll close the video down for the day. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check all my windows. Uh, these things will stick. And uh, that one's opening up fine. It's not sticking. If they do stick, be very careful. Usually it's a two-person operation. Uh, this is my emergency exit here. This is a two-handed operation. And uh, you know, push on them, make sure they're going to open up okay without any problems. Look, if they do stick, uh, do not keep cranking, cranking, cranking. Uh, you could tear your seals. Be very, very careful. Um, have one person inside here, one person on the outside, slowly put pressure on it and have someone outside just with their fingernails gently pulling on it. And then you can take like that 303 protectant I showed you earlier and put a little bit on the cloth and just wipe around the edge of that gasket uh, for the window if you have these types of windows and that'll prevent them from sticking. Uh, again, the last thing you want to do is go down like we're going to be going in this beautiful uh, beach area down in Florida and we're going to have wonderful breezes, 10-15 mile an hour beach breezes. We're going to open up the windows. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. And I want my windows to work. So make sure you take care of that uh, and check all your windows before you leave, especially your fire exits. If something, you know, heaven forbid, something bad happened, the last thing you want to be doing is getting stuck because you can't get your fire escape window opened up. So good tip that you want to consider. Okay.
Another thing you're going to want to do before you head out on the road is your refrigerator. It doesn't matter whether you have a propane model or in our case we've got a residential model. I'm going to um, make sure I'm going to turn it on and uh, you know make sure all the lights are working. I'm going to give this probably about an hour or so and then I'm going to come back and check it and make sure that it's getting cool. I've had this on probably about for maybe about 15 or 20 minutes and uh, I can already tell that it's cooling off inside uh, and then I will come back in probably about an hour maybe two hours and then check it and I'm gonna leave it on because we're gonna be packing it with food here uh, tomorrow and the next day and you know getting all of our produce put in all of our canned items and those types of things so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on let it get good and chilled and then uh, that way when we head off down the road I'll know that all of our food is going to be safe but uh, goodness um, the last thing you want to do when you go on a trip is put all your food in there turn it on and then when you get to your destination, you've lost everything. And, and now, you know, you're running around with coolers and so forth. It's better to go ahead and do this a week before your trip. Make sure that everything is okay. And if you do have problems, that at least gives you that week to troubleshoot it. Probably order some parts off Amazon or, you know, call a, an RV uh, repair facility and see if you can't get it fixed. But um, always, always check that refrigerator before you head out the door, okay? The last item that I'm going to be doing, and this certainly isn't the least of them, it's probably the one that I enjoy the least, is Joan and I have this term, and we call it BPOC. <laughs> uh, I don't know where I came up with this thing. BPOC stands for Big Piles of Crap. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend any of you. If it does, I apologize. But BPOC. Every RV, every camper in the world has BPOC and it can become overwhelming. And what we do is we BPOC, BPOC the camper. That's easy for me to say, right? And we'll do a couple things. You know, we'll go into all of our drawers. These drawers are just, you know, they'll get full of things. We'll come up into all of our cabinets, you know, and just get that junk books uh, we'll have tons and tons and tons of books this is a great time to go to the used bookstore take those you know 20 books that you read last year take them down to the used bookstore get you 20 more to be able to take out on your trip and you know and you're fixed for I don't know, it depends on how you read, a week or a year. <laughs> I use a Kindle, so I don't have to worry about that. But uh, I love my Kindle. But um, we, uh, you know, just go through everything. And then, oh, this is the one that's really a mess. Let's go down below, and you got to reorganize the garage. Oh, the that thing is just a monster. Especially if you travel between seasons. Winter and summer, we have different stuff. Let's go look at it. So, you know, it, it's a great time just to open it up, um, get all your junk out that you're not using, put all the junk in that you are going to be using, just reorganize it, make it easy to be able to get to everything. I spent probably, honestly, I probably spent a half a day just going through everything. Um, there were certain things I didn't like about the setup that we used last year. Every year I seem to be changing that routine of where I put things. I always want to make sure I have certain tools in here for the road. Oh, can I show you this? This has nothing to do with being organized or the essential things. I want you to see this. Is this crazy or what? You're gonna love this, this is awesome. All right, Walmart special. I think these are what, $9? Walmart special and this was some junk uh, four by four post that I just cut in the odd links and then just use like a deck screw to hold them and then I set these out by the campsite look we've been using these and people are going crazy over them I probably ought to <laughs> make a bucket load of them and sell them while I'm out on the road huh <laughs> be an entrepreneur <laughs> but anyway we get it all set up. You know, you've seen where we have the kitty pan over here to the side. I'll make sure that I've got all my cleaning supplies, my Clorox wipes, my paper towels, all that type of stuff. Air fresheners, blah, 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 blah. And just, you know, and vacuum it out while I'm in there. So anyway, that's it. That is the RV tips uh, and essential things that you should do for prepping prior to taking off for your summer trip. Some of these that you use maybe every winter. Um, if you're a camper that only goes out, say, um, three weekends a year, do 
most of these, the simple things, the water, the black tank, uh, check your windows, those types of things. And then at least once a year, do the heavier stuff. And then uh, always, always several times a year. As a matter of fact, I even check my air pressure week to week to week to week. If I'm getting ready to roll, I check the air pressure in the tires. Do what makes you comfortable. You'll know what works, what just doesn't work for you. And there's probably a couple tips in here that I may have left out that you do that I would love to be able to hear. Why don't you put them into the comments section and let's just see what other people do just to kind of prep prior to their trip. I'd love to hear from you and find out what you do. Look. I'm going to be doing a bunch of this stuff as we travel down into Florida this year. Uh, we're going to have uh, some new little twists of some things that we're going to do. Make sure you subscribe at the end. Uh, I'd love to have you in your subscription. I appreciate all you who have stuck with me this year in your viewing. And uh, we're just having a great time. And why are we having a great time? Because I love RV life. <laughs>